Okay, hello everyone. This is Jeff, aka Full Spectrum Separator, here with another tutorial video. This time we're going to use the same image that I used in the last video, um, but instead of in Corel Draw, we're going to color separate this manually in Adobe Photoshop CS6. Okay, now on the left here I have um, this actions panel, and these are my own actions that I've created. This is not uh, this is not something that I have yet out there. Um, <clears throat> Let me see, these would bring it all the way to rip. Um, I do have some buttons in here, manual layer steps, that I use myself to speed up some of the process of doing manual color separations. But we're going to just close this actions panel for now and uh, do this the manual way. <clears throat> and I will use some presets to speed it up. But let's go ahead and um, you know do this to separate documents. We could go to multi-channel mode with each of the color separations, um, but then we'll have to set colors to them and preview them in the color. Uh, we're just going to basically separate this to separate documents um, as the colors are going to be grayscale on each document. Uh, we could also just go to layers, but you know, for the sake of keeping it um, simple and to the point where you would print each document as your color separation, um, <clears throat> that's what we're going to do in this video. So the first one I'm going to do is just duplicate this document, and we're going to call this the um, underbase white. Okay. And the first thing we're going to do is take this layer, and we're going to apply um, a black and white adjustment layer to this, um, and we're going to choose the preset, uh, which would be maximum white. Okay. And that's basically going to um, force all colors. In the artwork to white except for black right and then we would take these two layers and merge them I do control E to merge them together and the other way to do that is instead you know instead of using adjustment layers in this I'm gonna do the destructive processing to each duplication so um, let's just trash that layer and we'll go up here do image adjustments black and white but we'll use that preset maximum white okay and then we'll just do Control I to invert. <clears throat> and that would be the same thing if I really were to take this and Control Invert first, and then go Image Adjustments, Black and White, and Maximum White. Or I'm sorry, uh, we want to do Maximum Black if we invert it. Okay. Now let's go back to the original. We'll do Image Duplicate. And this is going to be our black. And we're just going to do image adjustments, black and white. We're going to choose the preset of maximum white. That forces all the colors to white, and now we just have our black. Okay. Basically, this is um, the black, and the inversion of it is your underbase. Okay. Now we're going to duplicate again. We're going to call this, um, let's say, the green. And let me go back to the original and duplicate and make the highlight white, because the highlight white is, again, a simple step. So we go Image, Adjustments, Black and White. And <clears throat> here, this time, we're going to do Maximum Black. So without inverting, we're going to take all the colors, force them to black. And what this does is now when we hit OK, we have the highlight white left over if we invert it. Okay. See how the highlight white is different from the underbase? Underbase is dark, darker. Highlight white is just the tints or the, the bright parts of the white. Um, <clears throat> so then we're going to go ahead. We've got the underbase, the black, the highlight white. Now on the green and the other colors, one of the steps that we're going to do first is try to pull the black away from the hues Okay, so that we can push each of the hues into a, um, another region. So um, there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, one of the ways that I like that's easiest is just you duplicate this layer okay, and we'll duplicate it again and uh, we'll take this one and we'll just do this image adjustments black and white we're doing maximum white okay so that gives us our black separation and then we're going to take the black separation um, on top of the original layer and we're going to actually set it to a divide lens, but first we want to actually duplicate that again. Sorry. 
Okay, so we set this one to a divide lens on top of the hue. Now merge those together. I do control E to merge. Now that pulls all of the hue underneath the black, so you have to be careful. That's too much of the hue. You don't want that much of it. So what you have to do now is take this black, okay, and invert it, and then set it to a screen lens. Screen on top of this, and then merge together. Okay, so I'm going to delete the original, and now we've got our hue pulled. All right. So the next one we're going to do image duplicate, and that one's going to be um, let's say the red, and then we'll do image duplicate. And this one will be the light blue, <clears throat> and we will image duplicate again for the yellow. So let's extract these now one at a time. Let's go to <clears throat> the green. And what we want to do now is go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and uh, used to be called the hue saturation lightness, just called the hue and saturation tool. And what we're going to do is actually narrow in on the greens. Okay, but the problem is you can't just move this um, to black with these tools. You, you have to be careful because the ramps are actually dialed in specifically for each of these presets. Reds, yellows, greens. Okay, they don't have solid right in the middle region. They have a lot, a lot of solid like a plateau. And then this is the ramp where it goes to fades to white. So what we want to do is first, um, it's a two-step process. First, we're going to take the greens, and we're going to move this slider, and it actually changes this number right here, to um, 119, and then move the other slider over here, it changes that number, to 120, or 121. And then we're going to take uh, this other end right here, and that's going to go to 60. And then this end right there, this one, is going to go to 180. 179 okay and then what we're gonna do is now shift the lightness of that to black all right now first you just have to hit okay and then process this again image adjustments we're gonna do um, where is it hue saturation uh, or actually we don't have to go through each of these now we can go to the image adjustments black and white and we're gonna say maximum white so it's gonna force all the colors, even the greens that were left over, to white. But that's the proper way to get these colors extracted for a uh, what's essentially like a simulated process type of a um, a blended print. So that's the green. So now we're gonna go through this process for the reds. Switched over to the red document. You can see we're on the red. Now we're gonna do image adjustments, hue saturation. Go to the reds, and shift it to black. However, we need to fix this ramp right here. So it needs to go from 0 degrees to 60 on one end and to 300 on the other. Okay, So we're going to move this to 359. Move this one over to about 1 degree. Move this one to 60. And move this one over to 300. And you know, if we're not going to print with magenta, and there were other magentas that we wanted to just capture into the red, you could expand this plateau or this gradient a little bit. We're just going to keep that as a true red, so 359 degrees or zero, 359 degrees to 300, and then one degree to 60. So you see how that's basically giving us a solid right at the zero degree point, and then that's a ramp of grayscale to the magenta and a ramp of grayscale to the yellow. We hit OK. But then we have to remove all the other colors back to white. So we do image adjustments, black and white, maximum white. Hit OK. That's our red. All right, now we're going to go to the light blue. Let's see, window, yep, light blue. And we're going to image adjustments, hue saturation. This time we're going to go to the cyans. And we're going to lightness all the way to black. We're going to narrow this up to 179 and then bring this guy, the ramp down to 120. Okay, that goes from green to cyan. And then over here, because we're actually going to want to um, include any of the royal blues in this separation, we're not going to just pull a royal blue, it's not really worth it. Um, we're going to actually expand this from uh, about 200 or 190 
over to, uh, let's say, um, 250. It extends a little bit past the blue there, OK? Um, and then we just push the, all that to black. <clears throat> so what we're doing is capturing a region that includes not just the cyans, but also some of those royal blues, um, but not so much of it that it would blend into any purples, although we don't have that in this artwork. Okay, so we're safe to just have that anywhere around that region. So let's hit OK. And then again, do image adjustments, black and white, maximum white. And that's our blue extraction. Window, let's go to yellow. Again, image adjustments, hue saturation. We'll go to the yellows. And it gives us a, a preset that if we bring the lightness down to black, um, it gives us the color. But we're going to just move this up to 59 degrees, move this one down to 61, okay, 59 to 61. You see how they put this slash right here? Because they show you it's kind of like the ramp that you're creating with these sliders. And then this one's going to go over to 120. So that blends our yellow um, to the green. And then this one goes over to zero, blends the yellow to the uh, red. Hit OK. And then we have to do image adjustments, black and white, all colors, maximum white. There you go. <clears throat> okay, so there's the different separations. We got under base. We have black, green, um, red, light blue, yellow, and we have the highlight white. Okay, and in some other future videos, we'll show you how to, uh, you know, put these into either channel mode instead of going to separate documents or. Um, in multiple layers, simulating the colors blending with each other, and then you can do a lot of cool things like adjustment layers um, for levels and curves. Um, I have some documents set up, like you've seen um, the little sneak peek of the, the action set here. You can just um, automatically rip things directly to the different modes um, as index dots or halftone dots um, of various frequencies, LPIs, <clears throat> as well as use these manual. Um, you know, action buttons to speed up what we were just what I was just showing you in this video. Um, but you know, these are not uh, uh, you know available yet. Um, let me just go through and see. Yeah, right here, this dot gain preview setting. See, that's what we, what you get into when you're viewing things in multi-channel mode, as opposed to layers. So we're really working on some new stuff that uh, involves. Um, color separating from an original like this, but it goes to layer groups and they all have the right types of blending properties that you can get a lot more realistic of a simulation and then have live uh, curve control or to you know preview your dot gains and then do curve adjustments to those uh, to compensate, which work much better than multi-channel mode, um, which is something that you know me as a professional color separator myself. Um, over the years, I just you know had always had issues with the way that multi-channel mode uses dot gain preview settings that just aren't realistically represented by the presses uh, in the situations we work with. So you always have to kind of you know make it work for a while, um, <clears throat> and then uh, it's just still not realistic when some of those colors blend. Uh, what you're going to get compared to working in layer mode. So that's a new thing that. Uh, you know, isn't in that particular action set, and it really is actually like a, more like a smart object file that you just load this in, and then it gives you each of these color separations uh, automatically just by having this file loaded in this image loaded into your smart object. It gives you all these layer groups that are already pre-built. Um, so it's just some stuff we're working on, but there you go. It's just the manual technique for using HSB and other tools uh, to extract color separations from you know, what seems like a complicated image, but really there's just a few colors involved in there. Green blending to yellow gets you that nice uh, uh, blend in there. You have some red up here in the label, and then just some light blues going on to, to mix and make that uh, bluish color with the gray. You know, if you print this um, under base, flash, and then do a black, maybe wet on wet with your colors, and then the highlight white last, you can actually get a really nice um, dot gain compensation naturally uh, using bright plastisol inks because the way that they work with each other um, on press <clears throat> just tends to lead to uh, you know really um, 
you know, like the, the printing with the right angles of the colors meshing together, and then the Plastisol inks, you don't really have to mix them down too much. Um, just do what you would normally do to print, uh, like higher end half tones through higher mesh screens. And uh, you, know, you print dark to light, and that actually helps, you know, as long as you don't base those inks down too much, um, keep them as, as close to the right out of the bucket as you can, and then they behave kind of like. Um, <clears throat> you know, printing on top of each other so that where there's, let's say, the green blending to the yellow in this particular image, if you print the green first and then the yellow after it, you're more likely to get that lime green color between the two than if you to print the yellow first and then the green over it because of just the way the natural dot gain happens from this separation technique. Okay, um, or you, you just take this into your normal way to um, you know, try and capture this particular blend uh, on press and it should work out much better than uh, some of the other techniques that go to multi channels and, and only give you a limited set of colors to work with. Um, you can start with your pure tones extracting them through that technique and then go through to uh, arbitrary methods. We'll get into some more future videos on how to do um, flesh tones and other uh, complicated you know shades and other mixtures of this you know, if you really wanted to pull this custom bluish gray color uh, that's really not that hard to do. But I'm <clears throat> going to wrap it up in this video to keep it short, and uh, that's about it. Thanks. Take it easy.